Welcome to Painting with Shauna on Thursdays. I'm so glad that you are here. I am really glad to be here too. I finished my delphinium last week and I am now moving on to birds. If you are interested, if you're not, you don't have to, but you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the little bell and it will tell you when I'm live streaming next week. Follow me on Facebook. They've done something with the like button, so I guess it's just a follow thing now. And I have a weekly newsletter. The link will be, be below after my live stream. Um, and it is, uh, I put stuff in there that I don't necessarily put anyplace else. So it's kind of unique and interesting and, and sort of background information that is in there. I'm excited to get back to birds. I truly am. And I have, I'm going to start with my largest piece, as I always do when I'm getting ready for a show. I start with my largest pieces because it's easier to go larger to smaller than to do small and they go quickly and then have something that takes a lot of time and you start to stress. So it's easier to go backward, go from larger to smaller as I get ready. So this painting is of a snow sculpture and I've placed ptarmigans around it. We have in Yellowknife um, a Snow King castle that runs from March 1st to the end of March. Well, unless it melts early, sometimes it's done that. Uh, it is really fantastic and they are planning it and they've got it all designed already. They're now just waiting for it to get cold enough so that in November they can start cutting out as the ice forms. They start to cut out the windows, the ice windows that they're going to be using, and they start to build up and pile up snow and do all that they need to do to get it prepared. And part of it is, for the festival, is they have snow sculpture people come. And they, uh, last year was local and that was fun, but the last time we had out of town snow sculpture people was in 2020. So in February I went just before they were going to open up and I'm so glad I did because I actually got a picture which I will put in my newsletter next week so sign up for my newsletter of the little clay mock-up they did of this snow sculpture and I know you can't see it fully right now in um, in the frame it's not all there you can see just part of it you will see the full picture once I move to the other camera here um, which reminds me set my alarm timer or else I will forget the other camera shuts off Aha, there you go <laughs> um, and I found I had a picture of that and the list of people who worked on this amazing snow sculpture so it was uh, a team, they called themselves New Friends. They were from Manitoba and Alberta. It's Don Jatrando, uh, Brian MacArthur, and Jordan Pratt, who were the team that carved this snow sculpture of um, space, our Canadian astronaut, Chris Hadfield. Now, in the link below later, when I get this finished, I will link over to his uh, video that he created and he did a cover with some word changes to make it sort of more uh, up to date of a David Bowie song called Space Oddity. It was a really, it was a big hit. It's had lots of views. So I'll put that in the link below, but I'll also add it into the newsletter. So I just thought, I mean, the theme was space in 2020 and it was fantastic and I just thought, you know, tarmigans need to be going there. So that's what we're going to paint. I've started with a, um, I'm going to move this down out of my way. I started with doing um, a color, um, uh, a color study of this painting so that I could make some decisions about what I was going to do before I started painting really large. And I, you know, I, I took pictures of it. I thought it looked too blue and then it looks blue here, but it's actually quite gray. 
And I know that wintertime is pretty monochromatic, but it's not quite that gray. So this is where I started, and now we're going to move over here. I'm uh, going to start with working on the sky and the trees before I start on. So I work from the back to the front, and let's get going. Okay, so I, I put my uh, um, paint already out, and I've just, uh, oh, I didn't, well, I guess I'll talk about that now. Um, put this in the place. I'm just getting everything in place so that I can work efficiently and not be, yeah. Okay, we are ready to go. So the brushes I'm working with today are Rosemary Ivory Dagger. It's a half inch um, dagger. So it has a lot of space to move with. And, and, and my, my other favorite are the Brights from Princeton, Dakota. Um, they're called Dakota and this is a size six. So we're just gonna start when I did the color study, I started with the lighter side of the sky over on the, I'm going to think about what side I'm on, left side. Oh, isn't that just, it's like magic, except I'm using the wrong brush. Let's put that brush down. I put two brushes in my hand. Let's get the... So what I like about the ivory and the dagger is I can move fairly quickly with it. You can see I can move the paint around. I don't put the paint too thickly. I want it nice and thin. I'm going to scrub it out and because I'm going to come back and do another layer at another time. Now I'm looking at my image and I want to make sure that I come down far enough to get into the trees and the trees will come so this painting is basically I got all these sounds coming in behind I forgot to turn the sound off um, this painting is basically um, uh, a, a monochromatic piece of work. Uh, it's going to be lots of value shifts as we go along. So if you're there, say hello to me. I would like to say hello and see where you're from. So I put um, a coat of, a thin coat of burnt sienna on the back of my painting to give me sort of a value way to see what my values are shifting against. I generally work, um, or maybe that's too early, um, on white when I am, uh, when I'm working with watercolor and I have predominantly worked on white when I've worked on um, ac acrylic too. I just thought I'd play with this and see what I thought of that. So I'm just building up and, and I can switch these values around if I find that I've gone too early. When I do my next level, my next pass, I can make any corrections that I need to. I do know that I want the sky to get darker as it comes around the corner here. So let's get some darkness in here. I think it was really, um, I, I love this sculpture. Um, what they can do with snow is fantastic and then it melts away and, and it's so interesting. So. So the colors that I'm working with today are pretty narrow range of colors. Um, the sky is 
uh, a cerulean blue that has been neutralized with um, sort of a Munsell gray. And I've done, this is value five over to value uh, 6.5. I really was thinking about when I was thinking about, oh, where's my trees? My trees are going to be down here, so I need the sky to come down. Um, and maybe I'm going to do some variation here so that the sky lightens up as it comes to the trees. Um, my, you know, I, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Ah, there you go. So we'll build it in between the two here now, and we'll fill this in. Oh, I know the colors I was using. So this is with a Munsell gray neutral, like the neutral gray, which you can make with, um, oh, with a black and neutralizing it with a raw, uh, umber. Uh, I don't, make mine I have the luxury of being able to and I'm just going to get rid of the ridges because I don't want any ridges there's my other brush there and let's use that before it dries too much let's get the ridges gone I don't like ridges on my painting so I just realize that I'm seeing that and when you're moving fast and you're moving with a big brush sometimes that's what you get with is ridges which is fine and lots of people like that texture. I'm just not my my thing. Okay. I see that it's ooh, that's probably too light. I'll just bring that down a little bit by adding. Bring that over. So I mixed up all of my colors and I put them into tubes. That way I can come back to them and use only a small amount while I'm painting and I can just keep adding more as I need to. Okay, the trees will come in here. I think we're far enough down now. Oops, let's move this to, no, that's probably too dark. So let's lighten that up, add some paint. And I'm gonna bring this down here. So I have a new program that I'm using for my photo editing. My, my oldest recommended it and it's called Affinity Photo. And I had an old version of Photoshop on my computer from the computer before. I was able to move the license along. Um, but this time they've switched now over to subscription based. And that was just, um, I'm just, you know, an artist. I'm not the artist who has lots of disposable income to be doing that. Uh, my oldest recommended Affinity. Well, what a great program. It was easy peasy to get the, the, um, uh, the ptarmigan into the bottom of the picture. Oh, is that there? Oh, yes, it is. Okay, it is there. So you can see right next to, to um, where I'm working. Where am I working? Oh, okay, right. Um, you can see the image. I'm going to move my camera. Oh, right. No, my camera's fine. What I'm seeing is just part of the... Okay. So I'm just... Anyway, it may, it's making my life much happier. It's just been so easy to work with and to manage and to figure out. Now I seem to be sagging a bit here on Facebook which seems to be its normal course of action. Things are going better at, uh, maybe? Well, I don't know. I have Northwest Tell. In, uh, in October, 
I will, or November, I will get Northwest Tell in to help me with, with the problem I'm having. So I'm gonna put the trees in now and I'm just putting the shapes in. I might come later and I'm thinking about variation, um, about, I'm not worried about um, variation in color because this is just a small area of the painting. Just variation their, their height and their and I did a value four um, so that it would stand out a little bit um, against the um, uh, against the um, my color study here because I think I thought about something when I was doing this and I've yeah okay. I need to bring in some more sky and bring it down because I'm going to bring it down like it's on a hill. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to get them in to see if we can get me hooked up properly right onto the computer because our house is wired, but it didn't seem to get finalized. I don't know. Some places, like my upstairs office, I have no problems. I can hook right in, and this one's not functioning. So I will uh, worry about that another time. Okay, so I'm bringing the hill down, and I'm looking at the trees, and I'm thinking about their shapes and their sizes. I am not a tree maker, and so I am not... Um, like Bob Ross who makes happy little trees and makes them look really good, whatever. I'm, I'm just, uh, I will come back and play with this idea and build up as I go along. The trees in the north are pretty scrawny little things. Looking at where I'm going here. And I will put some snow in here. I'm gonna get rid of the ridges because there's lots of ridges when I'm working the way I am. So let's just tidy them up. This is just the first pass, so I'm not, I'm more worried about the ridges because they're hard to get rid of if you don't do something with them. But, um, Yeah, they're just, they're, yeah, it's the first pass. It's just making decisions and getting the color in place and getting the trees in place so that they make sense. Okay, so we have trees up here and there's a small one here. And I am using the image to sort of think about variation because, of course, trees are never all exactly the same. And I think I'm going to put another set of trees down here. I will come and put snow around it, um, but I think that that would be a, a good place to put some trees is down in here, like it's coming down. And I didn't make decisions on this color thing from earlier. Yeah, Northwest Tell is not consistent. They're hard to, to stream from here, guys. I, I appreciate your patience. Okay, so I've got some trees there. Um, I don't think I'm going to, I might come and do more trees there, but I'm gonna leave that for right now. And what I'm going to do is get started on modeling the, um, the snow sculpture. So let me close up this paint that I have. I set up my palettes in uh, containers so that I could snap the lid on and keep them, the paint from drying out completely. So when I did the 
the um, when I did this uh, color mock-up, I was checking my values and I've decided that I need this value to be lighter and my darkest, darkest value is here. And it, I don't, didn't feel like it was dark enough. So I've chosen to lighten my values and darken my values and let this be sort of all the same, not very much values. Cause really I want you to pay attention to what's happening here and the uh, birds that are on here. I'm going to use the same tools that I've used before and I'll be using them periodically as I'm placing things down. I'm going to be using my little squares of, uh, of gray paper with the hole so that I can check between this and the drawing to see if the value is close. Now the, cha the, the image, the challenge is what paint can do and what uh, print can do is two different things. So even though I've gone, I'm not doing pure white, um, I save my dark, like black and white, and I don't use them except if I've got like highlights to uh, work on, uh, on like if something had highlights, then that's where I would put my white. But here, the snow is not going to reflect the same way. And the modeling is quite subtle on the snow. So I want to take my time and build it slowly, thinking about, okay, so I've got that. And I'm finding that brush a little harder to manage, so I'm going to go to my, my square, my uh, Dakota, Princeton Dakota, because I want to come in and be really careful making, oh, well, that's not going to work. Okay, so if you get the paint over top, dry your brush off and come and just remove it. I don't want to scrunch too hard because I'll pull off the sky and I don't want to do that. I'm trying not to get in front of the camera so that you can see what I'm doing, which always makes it more interesting. If you can see, I would think. Okay, so there's subtlety as it goes darker and, and I've built up a, um, there let's get rid of that make sure I got rid of all the ridges I don't like those ridges they just stand out and when they get hard that's it there is no getting them down <laughs> okay got the ridges off and you can see that I you can still see through it I haven't made it opaque enough because I'm relying on my layers to do that. So I've put in my lightest area and I've got many areas that are highlighted by the, the sun. Um, here is facing towards the sun. So the planes that are facing towards the sun are going to get lots of light and the planes that are not will get less light. So that subtlety is part of what I'm working towards. So I've got the lightest light here, and then I'm seeing that it just subtly becomes a little darker, and then a little darker as you move away. Now, if you have too much paint on your brush, you're gonna get ridges. And I was just trying to demonstrate that subtlety of change that I can, that I'm seeing and get it thick enough so you can see that. Um, okay. And the darkest place I have in here, which I'm going to, I, I chose after my color study, I realized that my values were not 
a value dark enough is right in here. And there are other areas on the sculpture that has, has this dark area. Now, I'm putting it in. It looks very dark. It may not be um, how dark I put it in on the final pass. It's just, it is right now. And I'm thinking about where I'm at. There we go. And it's dark down into here. And then it starts to lighten up. So as, as, the sh as everything shifts, I'm going to get less paint on there. I'm being a little goopy tonight, today, which is a little odd. It's because I'm trying to get it thick. And really, I will do that the next time. Keep being spongy. I love the subtle, sh the subtle value shifts. They just are really interesting to try and model and show up. As I come out here and I see this cast shadow, and that's the shadow from the, um, the head of the, the sculpture. Okay. I see that uh, we're keep freezing on Facebook. I'm not sure. It's frustrating. It is frustrating. Okay, so I'm going to come and I'm going to continue on here. And I'm going to build that next to um, next to that light area because there's this really nice light area here you can see. And that's facing right towards the plane of the sun. It's, that plane is so you're getting the full effect of the sun on it. Um, to about here, and then it starts to switch. Okay. Okay, here we are, just... I'm not worried about perfection. This is the first pass after all. I'm just worried about getting the information down as I see it and then building from there. Now with acrylic, you have to spritz your, your bit from um, drying out so that you can keep working. Okay, what do you think? Think it's coming along? Okay, so I'm gonna pick out some of the light areas because I know what you're seeing is from just up here. So I'm gonna pick out some of the light areas and put them in place. And then it subtly shifts down a little bit because the plane is moving away from the light. But it's still getting way more light than this area is. Okay, so as I come down, I'm noticing that we still have a little bit. There we go. And then it's going to start to lighten up a bit as it moves around this corner here. And here we're seeing, oh no, no, it doesn't lighten up. Clean my brush. 
dry it off. The reason I work sight size is because it does make it easier to see these gradual shifts when they're large enough to work from. And get the shapes fairly accurate. I will get more accurate as I go along. So now let's see what this value here is. And everything is in context. Oh, let's get that all the way up. That's the lightest. Everything is in context. So it's what we compare to one thing against another. So I will make changes as I go along because right now I'm seeing it compared to the orange, but as I get other values in there, then I will start to um, be able to read the values in a much more efficient manner. So I can see the darkest part of this is right up here. There's a dark part here. We're just going to pull that down a little bit and then we're going to bring in the next shift up and lighten it up. Clean off my brush, tidy up the, the ridges and yeah, build it up. So then there's this shape here that's lighter. I'm going to go another step lighter. And all of these will be corrected as time goes forward. I'm not, I'm just trying to get some information in here and then I can go from there. And that might be too light. I mean, it feels like it's too light. So I'm going to back up a little bit and grab some of the darker paint and put it in place. And so this color combination for the snow, I used uh, ultramarine blue and cerulean blue as a combination. Now I can see when you look here and here, what's the value shift there? Because there's a little bit of reflected light because the, the light is coming back and bouncing back over here. And that's why the helmet is a little bit lighter than this darkest area. Okay, we're gonna come down here and okay so we're building form building a sense of roundness well, we're really frozen on facebook aren't we let's see if we really are here let's see let's see where we're at okay now it's still moving along Sometimes the, um, my computer freezes, it seems. So if you're here, say hello. That would be great. Um, and I'm seeing lighter here. So I'm going to So this is value 5.5 .5, and then I'm going to value 5 to bridge that together. I have, I think a value 7 around here. It's, it's um, way lighter but not as light as this is a value 9.5. Um, maybe this is, this space in here is a value, uh, yeah. And I see that there is, that's a value five and I'm gonna bring in a little bit of value six up here and then go back to that seven just to 
finish off that little shape that I'm seeing as it moves into the area that has 7.5. See where we're at there. Clean my brush off. I think that's pretty good. You know, um, let's fill in that space. So it's 8.5 and 7.5. And then I'm going to use my handy dandy little gray things. And I'm going to check that value out because it's hard to read values. Sometimes you need to isolate the colors and see what you isolate the values. So I'm just going to continue to model what I think I'm seeing and then build towards what actually is happening. Okay. So grabbing these two, I'm going to stand back because that's what you do is stand back. And then I'm going to isolate that value. And actually it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, this is an 8.5. Oh no, it needs to be lighter than that. Okay. There we go. And as it moves away from the light, as this plane moves away from the light, it's getting a little darker, but it's still pretty light. Let's, let's move. Just gonna nice and slowly and carefully build it up to where I want it to be. I, you know, there's going to be this color, this burnt sienna sneaking out, and that's all right. So I think I could use a little bit of that value 9.5 right here, right at the very start of this, of the top of the visor. Okay, so let's get some more white on here, and this is the 9.5 value. And you can see the second layer is covering so much nicer now. It's getting that opacity that I need. Now let's see. I'm going to start here at the 8.5. And I'm going to build across. So 8.5 and then 8. Taking my time to stop and look. And then 7.5. And that's actually a fairly big shift. So let's take some 7.5 and some 8 and put that together. So it's like 7 and 3 quarters. That's better. And then the other modeling we have to do is down this direction. So if you're here, say hello. It would be nice to have a little conversation, chat. It's kind of a weird conversation, but there you go. Okay, so let's look down here. This seems to be the darkest area as we model this way. So let's see if that's a six. We'll go with a six and see what we think. That seems a little too dark, so let's Bring it back up to 6.5. Well, maybe it's a 7 after all. So let's see. It's pretty subtle shifts here. So you just have to build it up and then see. So if that's 7, then I'm going to go that 7.5. And then I'm going to go to that 7 and 3 quarters to subtly connect the two.
clean my brush off, dry it off with the paper towel that's in my hand, come and soften the edges here. Just making sure that I don't have any ridges left because that, yeah. Okay. So I think I'm happy with that value. So I think we decided that was a seven. Whoops, spritz my, my paint. We'll see if I, nope, no, it wasn't a seven. Let's go with a 6.5 then. Yeah, okay. And now we're gonna model out this way. So because it's round, so if that's 6.5, then let's move it up to a 7, and then to the 7.5. And you can see how quickly that falls off, and we get into the light. And 8.5, and 9. Clean my brush off, I've got too much paint now and see if I can blend these out and soften them and make sure. So, though I got to nine, I think I got to nine too quickly here. So I'm just gonna bring that down and bring that to the 8.5 and bring that 8.5 because I want to create a sense of roundness, not flatness. And I'm not worried. The first per, first pass is just that. It's a first pass. And uh, I will get better with, with uh, more information on there. So we have about 20 minutes left on this. So I know that we're about here when I'm modeling down. Now it's not shifting too much away from that, from that brightest value, lightest value, but it is shifting a little bit as it shifts away from, from the sun. And as you can see, as soon as we shift it, now this value needs, uh, probably need, well, it will need, um, Extra. Let's go back over here. And we thought that was a six here. Okay, yep. Go to a 6.5, which is lighter. So remember that my value scale, I use uh, 10 as white and nine as, um, or, or one as black, zero as black, because Terminator lines, just not on, on this, it's because it's round. And so it's a subtle shift and you just have to figure out what that subtle shift is and keep building towards, oops, no, that's definitely too dark. So this is 8.5. Mm. Mixing, uh, I think I need a eight and three quarters. So I'll take a little bit of the nine and lighten that up. So the shift from the light to the dark is, is very gradual and we need to take our time and think about what we're seeing and make that shift nice and slowly. Spritz my paint again. Okay, so this is the lightest area, and then I'm shifting it down just a touch to here. Thinking about that round shape. I'm gonna shift it down a little bit more, so to that eight and three quarters, because it's a very subtle shift. So when I said I worked with uh, ultramarine blue and cerulean, I've um, 
added also a neutral gray in to bring down what we call the chroma. The chroma is how clear the color is or how grayed out it is. Since we don't have a terminator line, we have to really be careful here that we're not creating lines that are too hard and fast. So I'm going to come in with my clean brush and I'm just going to soften this. Just soften it by blending the paint out and into the lighter area. It's coming along. I mean, there's lots to do and there's lots of changes that will happen as I move along. Oops, that's too light. So let's get a value 8 and bring that down. Well, maybe a value 7.5 because I'm mixing in with paint. All right, take the paint off the brush, dry it. Clean my brush again. Yeah, that's better. Let's get. Oh, whoo, escaping brush. And paint on the floor. Clean that up. Cross that. Okay. Continue on here. So let's see where we're at by adding in subtle shifts as we move forward. And immediately I can see that this probably should be darker actually. Let's darken that up. See if we can bring it to about there. Yeah, so this is a value 7.5 that I'm adding in to bring that, that shift down. This will be so much better the second pass because then I can bring the seven in here. And I'll get it rounder when I uh, do the next pass because I'll, I'll pay more attention. I'm going to bring in some of that light in here and I'm going to lighten this section because now that I've got this going, I can see that my understanding of the values was not quite correct. Ah, there we go. Now, let's see. We're going to start with this section here. Nice and slow. Oh, I think well, no, actually that might be all right. It's really hard to read values when you're just um, against this, which turns out to be, I don't know what value, but the value background is, it's about a value seven. Okay, so I started with a six. I'm going to go to a 6.5 because I can see there's a value shift here just happening and then I'm going to come to a seven and slowly bring that value down back to a 6.5 so you can hear that I've actually made my values hop instead of just uh, five four three I've done the 0.5s between because this is such a subtle, there's so much subtlety, it just is easier to have those, those already mixed next to each other so that I can mix them easily and I can see what's happening and I can create that shape change and change of of um, change of value that I'm seeing. And sometimes I'm not going fast enough. I can see that 
it seems like I'm not quite going fast. I've got my eyes squinted as I look at the image um, back and forth. Uh, that helps with reading the values easier, like it just takes out extra light and it seems to help with that. Okay. Yeah, and I see that it comes around. And where is it? Wait, where is it going? There's all sorts of information here that's interesting. And I'm going to bring a little darkness into this part here, just a slight darker value shift as we go around the corner. Okay, let's go up here and see what's happening here. I'm going to use my little, my little gray cards and I'm going to figure out where I'm seeing the similar values so that I can figure out what value I'm at um, by comparing that. Okay, so I'm kind of thinking that I'm in this value range, which I, if I remember correctly, was about a six. And I can see the subtle shift for up in a with a little bit of extra light here, just enough to just give some dimension that's changing. And maybe it's a, actually to a 5.5 here as well. So just adding that in to get that value. I don't want that straight line there, so I'm just going to come in and blend it a bit and blend it into the other paint. And oh, I see that it goes a fair amount lighter as it comes. It's getting more light in here than uh, this part is. Okay, I see that there's a darker area next to it. It's almost 3.5, this little line of darkness. Okay, I'm going to clean my brush off because I have way too much paint. And we are at, oh, we just have a few more minutes here. So nice and slow, and we're going to add some uh, subtle lightning it's not that subtle but we'll be building up these shapes as we go along now this is a big brush and that works great for laying down things it's not a huge brush i could, probably could have had a bigger brush for these larger spaces but i just don't happen to have i mean i i do have a huge huge one but that's like unmanageable for me okay so let's go up here and see if we can get this all in here. So I started with a six, I'm moving down to a, a 5.5. Whoops, put some paintbrush, paint on my brush. That would be helpful. I'm moving down to a five. And I'm moving up to a 4.5. Moving down to a 4.5. Okay, and then there's that six again, right in here. I think that's a six. Get that shape in there. Of course, I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera so that you can see everything and I'm not too much in the way. So, you know, when I paint normally, I can like get right into it and get going down the right direction, but that's all right. Oops. Go over the edge, clean my brush. Move 
that water out of the way, put this water. My water is getting pretty yucky, which is not a surprise given that I've been painting for an hour. I often go and, um, and, uh, oh, that's darker still. Okay, so I've got four in here. I often go and change my water um, regularly so that I have fresh water. I have two containers going here so that I've been able to just switch over to the other container. Using my brush just to soften the edges and to get rid of those ridges. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's continue on with this space here and see what we're seeing. So I see a little bit of, oh, get my hand out of there. I know what I need to do. Okay. A little bit of light right there and I'm gonna put the strongest value, the lightest value right in this area. Of course, I can switch it all over when I'm ready. And where else am I seeing? I'm seeing it catch right here. And right there. As this moves away, um, this area here moves away, it, it fairly quickly turns up the corner. It's not a as subtle as, uh, and then I could just pull. So that's 8.5, and now I'm down to value eight. So I've gone from 9.5 to 8.5 to eight, fairly quickly. Now I will come and correct that as I need to in the second round. I might have needed a little bit of nine right here. Okay, we're starting to see some, some movement here. Interesting, I don't have my lines connected properly. So let's, let, let's collect, connect them. So I actually, when I drew it, I drew the, I didn't realize I forgot to draw one of the lines, but that's all right. Make all those corrections as we move along. Well, we're almost done for today. I'm gonna correct this shape here and bring it back a little bit more, which will then connect it all the way through better. Okay. Things are always shifting and changing. I think this is a good place to stop today. I'm just gonna spritz things. So you can see we got a pretty good start today. That's an hour's worth of work uh, at this point when I'm just starting to build forms and so forth. Um, next week, I will be further along as I will be working, working, working all through the long weekend. I hope that you have a wonderful September long weekend. The weather is glorious outside here right now. So I am gonna head off, put the links in, in, the, in the description below so you can go and see the Chris Hadfield uh, uh, cover of um, his, oh my goodness, my brain has just, yeah, of David Bowie's song. Uh, and you can go and sign up for my newsletter and you can, you know, subscribe to YouTube and, and go and follow me on Facebook at Dancing Raven Studio. Um, and I will see you next week. Have a great week. Bye.